voting uh, underway in South Carolina. It's uh, the Democratic primary going on there. The Republicans have their big primary that will pit Nikki Haley against Donald Trump and what they call and for all the marbles on the table, at least for Nikki Haley. She's saying it's not the end of everything. But that's three weeks from now. This primary is happening today. Uh, and we have Marianne Williamson with us. And whatever your opinions of Marianne Williamson, I might point out here, for those who don't know, that long before Robert F. Kennedy Jr. was talking about taking on uh, a fellow Democrat and a giant in his party, and Dean Phillips came along. He's not on the ballot, for example, in South Carolina. And Gavin Newsom seemed to be teasing a presidential run. There was Mary Ann challenging the president, taking on when he was a lot more popular. She's gotten a little more popular right now. She joins us out of Nevada. Uh, Mary Ann, good to have you back. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, you must feel like Rodney Dangerfield sometimes, like you get no respect. Uh, you know, you've been there and you've been slugging it out. You've been taking on the Democratic establishment. Uh, they've been predictably ignoring you. How does that feel? Well, they've been more than ignoring me. They've been belittling me. Remember, as soon as I announced the president's uh, own press secretary on the presidential podium belittled me. I think the president actually owes me an apology. It's not about me. I'm a big girl. When you ask me how I feel, I can take it. I mean, you're running for president. There's a lot of heat in that kitchen. But it's an insult to every Democratic voter. It's, a dem it's an insult to everyone who is very interested in hearing other options than that which is anointed, the, the candidacy of the president being anointed by the DNC. So, no, that's not okay with me, not because it hurts my feelings, but because this is not what the Democratic Party should be, and this is not what our democracy should be. Now, as far as respect is concerned, I feel some self-respect. That's how a system like that works. It wants you to lose all confidence in yourself, particularly as a woman, I think. I feel self-respect, and I know a lot of people respect the fact that I'm talking about the actual experience of the American people. We have 39% of American people who say that they are regularly skipping their meals in order to pay their rent. We have half of Americans living paycheck to paycheck. We have Americans who are struggling to make it. And now with these retaliatory airstrikes, we are provoking Iran. So actually, I feel pretty good because I'm having the conversations that I think matter the most. Well, and you do keep those conversations going, Marianne. I mean, no offense, but the White House points to the latest jobs report, 353,000 more than the latest month, and the continued improvement in the economy as proof that you're wrong. What do you say? What I say to that, Neil, is that you and I both know, and I think they know as well, that for 20 percent of Americans, and that does include me, those of us who have made it in the economy up to that top 20 percent, the economy is very good. What do they say, however, to the fact that half of all renters cannot afford their rent? Seventy percent of Americans say that they live with chronic economic anxiety. They're talking about economic data. I'm talking about human despair. And as far as that jobs report is, um, is concerned, how many of those jobs are jobs that somebody can support a family of four, of uh, even uh, two on with just one of those jobs? Remember, in the 1970s, well, actually, the average, average wage, American average could work wages one wages there, though, Marianne, did go up, uh, in fact, much further than, than, than we thought. In fact, now people are worrying that they went up so much, the Federal Reserve might hold off on rate cuts. How do you feel about that? What I feel about that is that the Federal Reserve is thinking about that top 20 percent a whole lot more than it's thinking about the permanent underclass that exists in this country. We have an economic system now. When you look at the 1970s, Neil, we had a thriving middle class in this country. None of those e economic data points that you are mentioning point to the restoration of a middle class in this country. When you have the, uh, uh, the a majority of Americans who cannot afford to absorb a $500 unexpected expenditure, no, things are not going mm. well. You have the highest level of poverty, including child poverty, of course, of any advanced nation. And that's the point of this campaign. We refuse to acquiesce to a narrative that serves an elite, that serves a few, but at the expense of the many. That is not the visceral experience of the majority of Americans. This idea that everything's rosy is yeah. not the experience of the majority of American people. If it doesn't My work, campaign is for them. I understand. If it doesn't work out for you, would you support Joe Biden? I will not do anything that I feel helps uh, Donald Trump get back into the White House. So if you had a I choice between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, I think you've said this before, you'd go to Biden, even though he's all but ignored you, those, attacked if you, those are my and only, the people around yeah. him have humiliated you. It, it, you know, I'm a big girl. Okay. This is not about my being humiliated. You know what I mean? This is about this is about our country and the state of our country, and I'm sure you share that uh, with me. We're 
we're grown ups here. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, they have they have treated me worse than I would have expected, but I, you know that's not what makes me cry. What makes me cry is to see 600,000 people who are uh, homeless every night. What makes me cry is the fact that we are messing, we're provoking Iran right now. What makes me cry is what's happening to all of those people in Gaza right now. What makes me cry are much bigger things than whether or not my feelings get hurt by the DNC or anyone else. You, well, you, you say you're a big girl, but I've met you a number of times. You're actually very thin and fit. Person, so I, I think I understand. What do you say? I'm I, sorry. I, I, I didn't understand hear you. it. Now you say you're, you're, you're a big girl, but I've met you. You're actually very thin and fit. So maybe you're making a <laughs> metaphor there, but uh, we'll see. Very, very good seeing you again. Oh, it's always good, and thank you for having me. I so appreciate it. I wish you a beautiful day. Well, I enjoy all points of view. Marianne Williamson, thank you very much. Democratic presidential candidate, Marianne Williamson. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.